Good morning, everybody. So glad you could join us today. Um, wanted to uh, just share with you. Uh, I'm excited. Today is a wonderful day. We're um, getting ready this morning. Uh, it's bright and early on a Sunday morning. I think today is uh, January 19th, 2021. And um, <clears throat> just a beautiful day, uh, Sunday. And looking forward to a wonderful day in the house of the Lord with uh, the presence of the Lord and my family and my friends and uh, just enjoying uh, all that God has in store for us today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So I want to talk to you today about a subject in the word of God that causes a lot of, there's a lot of debate, you know, uh, and a lot of um, controversy and, and varying doctrines regarding the tension that we find in the Bible between foreknowledge, the foreknowledge of God, and predestination. Um, you know, in other words, is, you know, there, there's one camp in Christianity that says, you know, God has worked everything out. Every, everybody has uh, a, a preset plan for their life. Um, and there is uh, no changing that. And then there's another doctrine that says, well, there's, you know, free will and we have a choice as to what our eternal destination will be. And you find scripture to support both points of view in the word of God. And both of them are very valid points of view. And therefore, you know, the controversy that happens, you know, in the, um, in the church. So, you know, there's, there's foreknowledge, uh, there's predestination. And then, you know, how does, how does, uh, free will, uh, factor in to this whole matter between foreknowledge and predestination. Uh, so let's go, let's start in Romans 8, 29. <clears throat> so I'm in Romans 8, 29, and he says here, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So Paul is, Paul is this is one of the basic scriptures of this whole uh, doctrine of foreknowledge, predestination, free will. Where does all, how does all this work? And so he says, now, there were those that God foreknew. Uh, in other words, God foreknew what their choice would be. He foreknew what their ultimate destination would be. You see, one of the things we have to understand, you know, that, that, that we existed, our souls and our spirits existed prior to coming into a body. This is very clear in scripture and Again, I'm not going to be able for the sake of time on a video to be able to, you know, go into all that. But again, that is something we can study in subsequent lessons and subsequent videos. Uh, this whole tension here that we, we existed prior to taking on a body. The Bible is very clear in many instances. For, for instance, in one place we find that uh, the Apostle Paul said that Levi paid tithes while he was yet in the loins of Abraham. In other words, he is very clearly explaining to us that the spirit and soul of Levi, the priest, who was the father of the Levitical priesthood, he paid tithes while he was still in the loins of Abraham. In other words, prior to taking on a physical body and, and being born into this world, his spirit, his soul, in its pre-incarnate form, agreed with the Abraham when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, the great high priest who was out with, who was without beginning of days or end of life, and as a result of Levi's 
agreeing with that and saying in his spirit and his soul form before taking on a body, Levi said, that's right, I'll second that motion. I'm behind that plan right there to give honor and to give tithes to the Melchizedek priesthood, to Melchizedek, the great high priest. And as a result of his choice in his pre-incarnate form, Levi was conferred, on Levi was conferred the office of the priesthood. Uh, another place he told the prophet Isaiah, he said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Again, proving that before Isaiah even took on a body, that God had already known him. He had foreknowledge. He knew him before and he had ordained him and conferred upon him a destiny and conferred upon him an office. And it was according to Isaiah's choice in his pre-incarnate form. As it was with Levi in his pre-incarnate form. You see, we all made choices in eternity past before coming in to this world. And, uh, you know, in another place, I believe it's, um, I think it's Ezekiel 28. Could be wrong about that, but we'll look it up. Um, in Ezekiel 28, he said of, um, the, uh, uh, of Lucifer, he said, Lucifer, you have walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And if you study the biblical Hebrew and, 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 and what he's actually talking about when he refers to the stones of fire is the seed of every spirit and the seed of every soul in its pre-incarnate form. In other words, what he's saying is that in eternity past, when Lucifer led his rebellion in the heavens, in the angelic world, he, he tried to influence the souls of men, the souls of, of men to follow him and to buy into his lie, you see. And again, in Proverbs 8, we find that the, the souls and the spirits of men are mentioned there as being in fellowship with Jesus the Christ. Because he said there that my delights were with the sons of men. And again, in a pre-incarnate form. So I know I've just thrown a lot of scripture at you there. Uh, but again, this is something we can take and break down. And my hope and my desire is that uh, you will take the word of God and study its pages for yourself to see whether these things are so. They in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things are so. And I believe that if you will search the scriptures with an open heart and an open mind, that you will see that the things I'm telling you are so. Uh, <clears throat> let's go. Uh, to Genesis, the first chapter, and verse 26. I'm in Genesis 1 and verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing, that creepeth upon the earth. Again, here he is. He's, he, God is revealing his original intent for mankind. And that is to bear the image and the likeness of God. We are intended to be an imager of God. Now, we are, it, since we are images of God, and we are not only in the physical realm, but also in our in our our likeness and our mind and the way the way things work. That is apart from sin. Of course, we all have a disease called sin, but that is that is uh, temporarily messing up the image and messing up the likeness. 
that God originally intended, but he's going to take care of that. And he is overcoming that through the blood of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But God created man in his image and in his likeness. So we are to be like him. We are to bear his image. So does God have free will? Of course, God has free will. He can do anything he wants. So in order for man to truly bear his image and truly bear his likeness, man also was created with free will. God didn't create us to be robots. We were created with a will, a free will to choose to do good or to do evil. So because we have free will, we have this capacity then for good and we have a capacity for evil, you see. And so, <laughs> hallelujah, it, 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 we, are, we are then free agents, free just like our, our heavenly father. And God could have made us to be a bunch of robots, but he didn't. He chose to make us like him and to have that capacity for free will. But then you say, well, okay, so we have free will. Then what about this matter that was clearly spoken of in scripture regarding predestination and that God has predestinated some to, to certain places and in certain callings um, in, in him? So how does that work? How does that, that tension work? Because it seems to be a seeming contradiction. Let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter and verse nine. I'm in 2 Peter, the third chapter and verse nine. And he says here, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the first thing we have to understand about, for, uh, about predestination is that God wants all to repent. He never, God never predestinated anyone to hell. He never predestined anyone to hell. It's very clear right here. He said it's not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Hallelujah. So then, so we understand that. He's, he's, he, he's given us a free will. And, and with that free will, his highest wish, his highest hope is that we will choose to love him. And, and yet ultimately, because God is God and he's worked all things after the counsel of his own will, the Bible says that he, he has, he has uh, uh, given us that capacity to choose. And yet he knows exactly where we're all going to end up because he knows everything. He's an infinite mind. His ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. Man, that's powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God chose us according to, to his foreknowledge in eternity past. In other words, God knew, God knew what we were going to choose. God knew where we were going to end up and, and, and what degree of glory that we would attain unto in the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ and in following him. And so then because of that, because of our choice, he chose us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let's go uh, to uh, 1 Peter, the first chapter and verse 2. In 1 Peter 1 and 2, he says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you are elect. In other words, you were chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. We were chosen and predestinated according to what God already knew we were going to choose because he gave us the choice 
And, and he knew what we were going to choose. He knew where we're, we were going to end up. But he gave us the choice to choose whatever we wanted. <laughs> wow, that's so powerful. I'm in Ephesians 1 and verse 4. And he says here, the Apostle Paul says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. In other words, he chose us before the foundation of the world. Before he even brought the Son of God forth and slew him on his altar and slew the Lamb from the foundation of the world, he already knew what, he, what you were going to choose. He already knew everything. He knew the whole plan because he is infinite and because he is God. Hallelujah. But according to that foreknowledge, he chose us. He, we chose him. He chose us. Hallelujah. And, and in verse 5, he continues and he says, having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Hallelujah. So it's very clear that God, according to our choices in eternity past, God made choices about us according to his foreknowledge, according to what he already knew in his foreknowledge that we were going to choose. Now that's so powerful. Now I want to show you something about foreknowledge that is a very, now this is key to understanding this whole matter of foreknowledge and predestination. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 23 verses 7 through 13. I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verses 7 through 13. And it says here, And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah. And Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring hither the ephod. And then David then said David, O Lord, the God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord, God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. So David and his men were on, on the run from Saul. Saul was hunting David. He was trying to kill him, seeking to take away his life because he was threatened by someone who had the glory of God resting on his life. And so David entered into the city of Keilah with his men. And Saul heard, ah, he's in a walled city. All we got to do is go down and surround the city. We've got him trapped. And so David heard that this was going to, that, that Saul was on his way, that this was Saul's plan. And so Saul, I mean, so rather David said, bring me the ephod. Now, uh, and this is another huge subject in the word of God. The, the ephod had carried a breastplate. It was part of the garment, the garments, the eight garments that the high priest wore. And it is a picture for you and I of our priesthood and the kingship that God has given to every believer and conferred upon us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and, and within that breastplate, there were two stones called the Urim and the Tubi. And these two stones would flash any time that, that uh, the king or the, the, the leaders of Israel had a question regarding the government and the leadership of the nation that was too hard for them to understand. And too, it was not clearly 
<coughs> uh, delineated in the Torah, it, then, then God made a provision through this breastplate of the high priest that the, the, they would go and ask a question of the Lord and these stones would flash with a response. And God would give an answer. And it is a picture of how the Lord speaks to us as kings and priests in his kingdom today under the new covenant. And speaks to us through the, uh, the, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit that is given to us to lead and guide us into all truth, you see. And so um, David said, well, bring me the ephod and let's, at, let's, let's find out what God is saying here. And so he asked the Lord two questions. He said, Lord, number one, is Saul going to come down? And the Lord said, yes. And then he said, question number two, will the men of Keilah deliver me up? And the Lord said, yes. But let's watch what actually happened here. Huh. Verse 13. And then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Keilah and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah and he forbear to go forth. Now, think about this with me. God foreknew two things right here in these verses that never actually occur. Now, how, how, did, how did that happen? God foreknew it and he said it would happen, but it didn't actually happen because it was contingent upon the choices that man would make. David asked the Lord, Lord, uh, 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 is Saul going to come down? Are the men of Keilah going to deliver me up? And God said, yes, on both counts. But then based on that information now, David has a choice to make. And he could have sat there and let the prophecy be fulfilled. Saul would have come down. The men of Keilah would have delivered him up. And God still would have had his way. God still would have had a plan. But based on the information that David was given by the, by the high priest and by the, by the Urim and the Tubim and the Ephod and the flashing forth of that breastplate, David made a choice. And because of that choice, it changed the outcome that God had already said was going to happen. You see... A lot of times people will say, well, I got a prophecy and God gave me a word or God gave someone a word and said X was going to happen on a certain date and it never happened. Well, of course, that's foreknowledge, but it is also dependent and contingent upon man's choices because God is a gentleman. He does not force us. He gives us free will because he's called us to be like him and to bear his image. So just because God foreknows something does not necessarily mean that it is going to happen. You understand that God, being God, <coughs> foreknows every possible contingency. He knows every possible choice. And he has given us, he has foreknowledge of all of that and what the outcome of every possible choice that we couldn't possibly make would be. Huh. And yet <clears throat> he has then in that given us free will to choose whatever we decide to choose. But then ultimately God says, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to have my way. I'm going to have my way. No matter what you choose, I'm still God and I'm still going to work this out for my good and for your glory. Hallelujah. That's how you could say all things work together for good to them that love God and them that are the called according to his purpose because he knows every choice and he knows all contingencies, all possible contingencies in the universe are held by an infinite mind. <laughs> And God's having a lot of fun just working it all out. 
and letting man have his field day and letting mankind have their free will choice. But he said, ultimately, the apostle Paul said, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is so powerful. So God foreknew something that actually <clears throat> didn't come to pass. Hallelujah. Because the choice of man changed the outcome. David made a choice and he got out of Keilah. And therefore, based on that contingency, then Saul made a choice and he didn't even come down. But the Lord had said in his foreknowledge, yeah, David, based on the current information and based on the way things are right now, you stay in Keilah, the, Saul's going to come down, surround the city, and the men of Keilah are going to deliver you up. But God changed everything based on the choice of man. So, and, and so it is with us, you see, because God foreknows every choice that we're going to make. And he foreknows where we're going to end up. <coughs> he foreknew us because of the choice that we made for him in eternity past. And that is believers that I'm referring to when I say we. The choice that we made to know him in eternity past. The choice that we made not to buy into the lie of the serpent, the uh, of fallen Lucifer who walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire in order to spread his lies about the Lord. It's very clear there in the word of God in that portion. He says that he trafficked, the Bible says, by the multitude of his merchandise. In other words, he went around peddling. He went around selling a bill of goods to the seeds of mankind in eternity past. And he told them the same lie that he told man, uh, mankind in the garden when he said, you know, God hasn't given you the best. He's withholding from you. And that lie has infected the human race. And hallelujah. But ultimately, beloved, God is going to have his way. Hallelujah. So then he says, now in Romans, we read, so whom he did foreknow, them also he did predestinate. And the word predestinate here is um, prurizo in the Greek. And it's uh, in, in your Strong's Concordance in the Greek. It's number 4309. And it simply means to limit in advance. Or to put a fence around someone or something. So in other words, here you are. And this is your choice for the Lord. And you said, Lord, I choose you. Lord, I want you. I want to follow Jesus. I'm, I'm going to go all the way with you, Lord. And the Lord said, okay, I like that choice. I appreciate that. I choose that. And I will, because, and now you could have chosen anything you wanted. God gave you free will. And even yet today, you could potentially choose to backslide. You could choose to not believe. That's very clear in the word of God. He said in one place in Hebrews, he said it is impossible for them who have tasted of the heavenly gift and, 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 and the powers of the world to come, etc., etc. He says that they shall fall away to renew them to repentance. In other words, there is the possibility of us changing our choice because we always have been given that free will, free will choice. However, he said those that God foreknew, he predestinated. In other words, he put a fence around them and, uh, and said, you are, are, I'm going to put this fence around you that is going to be a barrier to prevent you from changing your choice no matter how hard the enemy fights you, no matter how hard the 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 Trials of life assail you. He said, I have limited you. I have put a fence of choice around you and worked out your destiny. And, and some of the, you know, we know those of us that 
are called to follow the Lord. You know, there's times in our lives where we've all had difficulties and trials and we've wanted to go to the right or go to the left or maybe go back or uh, throw up our hands and quit. But you always found that fence was around you. And man, I've spent time hitting, hit, hitting up against that fence. And, and, and let me tell you, brother, I, I hit the fence hard. And I kept hitting it until, I, you know, as the, the Lord said to the Apostle Paul, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, it's hard for you to kick against that thorny hedge that I've put around your life. I have fenced you in with thorns, Paul. And uh, at that time, his name was Saul. He said, I've fenced you in. And I'm not going to let you change your choice. I've got you limited. And, and some of us, you know, we have seen how God has limited us many times. We think, well, I could have gone here. I could have gone there. I could have gone into this career. I could have been famous. I could have been a star. I could have been whatever. And, and, and God was cutting off those options. It's like some of those options, God cuts them off. Or, and, and I say cut off because you still have a choice. He just puts a barrier there. He puts a barrier there. And that barrier, now you can still choose to climb over the fence, but it's going to be hard. He didn't say it was impossible for you to kick against the pricks, but he said it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. In other words, God still gives you a choice, but he's going to help you because he's going to put some guardrails, as it were, on your pathway to keep you from veering He's going to put some people and some circumstances and some situations there that are going to keep you fenced in and moving toward the destination of your ultimate calling. Uh, that is so powerful. You can see the fence in, in, in our lives so many times. So many times, you know, I've talked to people who have said, I would have been in the car that night, but something happened. God allowed this or that thing to happen and I wasn't there. I should have gone this way or this could have happened, you know, but God prevented me from, from making that choice. God prevented me from marrying that person. God prevented me from investing in that business deal because there was a choice and there was a fence that God said, I'm going to protect that choice from eternity past for whom he did foreknow them also, that's you, that's me. He did predestinate to what? To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren.